Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another makeup artist vlog. As you guys saw, I had to work at my office job this morning. For those of you that are new to my channel and don't know, I do have a part-time office job that I work 16 hours a week, which is the equivalent of two days. I usually work there on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but I didn't get done what I wanted to get done yesterday, so I had to come in for about two and a half hours this morning. For the people that are curious, I do work as a bookkeeper for an electric company. I'm not a licensed CPA. A bookkeeper and a CPA are two different things, so a bookkeeper is pretty much recording the numbers onto spreadsheets. I have no prior training over business or in accounting or anything. Like I just learned on the job. And so all the knowledge that I have right now is solely from me working at that job. That's pretty much what I do. After work though, I had to run by CVS. It's that time of the month. So I ran out of the things that I need to maintain it throughout the week, if you know what I mean. And then I also wanted to pick up a lip scrub because I ran out of the one that I had. I used to have the Bite Beauty lip scrub. As we know though, Bite Beauty went out of business and no longer sell the products. I wanted to get a more affordable lip scrub. I've come to a point where I don't want to keep spending money on high-end products that I'm not going to use as often. So I went ahead and got the Burt's Bees Conditioning Lip Scrub, and I'm hoping that this is similar to the Agave Nectar Lip Scrub from Bite Beauty. I do market myself as a luxury bridal makeup artist, and if you want to do the same or you want to attract higher-end clients like that, you are going to have to spend money on higher-end stuff because after a while, people will not see the point in spending money on your services if you don't have anything higher than drugstore products. Because as you get into like the higher paying clientele, they are going to expect the best and they're going to be a little bit pickier. They're not going to be as naive about products. And I'm not like trying to generalize or anything. I'm just saying that that's kind of a trend that I've personally noticed. I do definitely think there is some things in your kit that you definitely can skimp on. I don't really have anything going on today specifically. This is probably just going to be an editing and prep day because I have a couple of appointments tomorrow. There's a couple of bridal previews that I have going on tomorrow in the morning that are back to back. And then I also have one makeup appointment on Saturday. And that's pretty much it for this weekend. I don't have any weddings going on. I don't have any weddings for like a couple of weeks. I don't want you guys to have this misconception that I'm booked and busy all the time because all you guys see are me posting wedding vlogs. I'm trying to create a realistic version of what actually being a makeup artist looks like and you will not be booked and busy every single weekend. So I wanted to start filming vlogs even when I'm not super busy. So you guys know <laughs> that I'm not just doing weddings every single weekend because most of the people don't pay attention to the dates. I posted a Q&A um, on my Instagram page, so I'm actually going to be answering those questions now. However, I also want to film myself on this camera recording the stuff for Instagram because I think that some of people's questions that they asked on there are really good general content for me to actually address on here. So I'm gonna try to like overlap them so you guys can see what I actually posted on Instagram in case you guys miss it. Hey guys, I'm here to answer the q and A. I ended up finding the previous questions that people submitted. They were sometimes overlapping with the questions that I got from the current Q&A. So I'm going to try to not repeat as much as possible, but let's go ahead and get on into it because I know you guys are waiting for this. I do also turn on the captions all the time on these. Whenever you're scrolling on Instagram, Instagram automatically defaults to a mute setting and you have to specifically hit your volume buttons on the side of your phone to actually be able to hear what's going on. So then that's pretty much what it looks like. So it'll caption it as I'm going to so go to nude lipsticks for medium skin tones. And I'm going to share with you my top five that I found. So so a number one, I'm going to go in with um, a more peachy tone kind of lipstick. And this is Mac Yash. Um, it's kind of like a warmer brown peachy sort of color. And this one's very similar, but I feel like this has a little bit more of an orange base to it. This is Essence in the shade Special. Guys, I'm really having English problems. It's not okay. Okay, the last three are the pinky tone nude lipstick shades. My favorite one that I found recently that's like really affordable. I think these were only eight or nine dollars or something. It's from the Lip Stories collection from Sephora. It's like their Sephora collection. They come in these cardboard packagings and this one is a really dark mauve tone color, I would say. It has a little bit more of like that mauve purple kind of undertone. And this is in the shade three, which is We. I also have the shade Mare by MAC. And then this is the only one I have not touched yet. It's definitely a mauve like purple color. It's actually a little bit darker than the Sephora one, I think, um, and a little bit more on the pink side. And then the last one I have is the shade Chic by Juvia's Place. And this is probably the lightest one between all of them. And this is one that I use all the time because it's an equal mix between a brown and a pink. So yeah, those are my top five lipsticks though. Next question is your thoughts on the Too Faced Melted Matte Lipsticks. I am personally not a fan of liquid lipsticks. I've thought about using them for lip liners as they are a little bit more sanitary because you're not directly in contact with a person's lips like you are with lip liners. But that's probably the only way I would use them. I really am not a fan. I've never find a non-drying liquid lipstick. Like it's just not my vibe. I do like the range 
of the colors that Too Faced has for their melted liquid lipsticks, but I'm just not a fan of matte lipsticks though. Whenever I take time to do these Q and A's though, I take such a long time to answer questions. And if I don't feel like I answered it thoroughly, I'll refilm it. It usually takes me about a couple hours to film these. The next question is, how have you been? Uh, well, I really appreciate you asking me how I've been. I feel like most people just ask me about makeup artist stuff, which is fine, but I like answering personal things too. Yeah, I've been doing pretty good. Um, besides my mom's little stint, um, I don't know if you guys knew or not, but my mom did end up in the hospital about a couple of weeks ago. She's doing okay now, but that was the family issues that I was having. Um, and so I, that's why I didn't answer the Q&A to begin with, but she's doing fine now. She's in recovery. Besides that though, uh, my life has been pretty good though. Uh, jobs are picking up, weddings are picking up, and I'm ready to go into bridal season full force. Next question is, what are your go-to blushes and bronzers? Okay, let me go on the powder ones first and then also to the liquids because I do have both. Um, number one go-to for powder bronzers are the Huda Beauty Glowish Bronzers, and then I also do have one Morphe bronzer that's like in a deeper shade. I think it got discontinued, which kind of upsets me, but I did need a deeper shade what Huda carried. And then for the powder blushes, I carry all the NARS blushes. I do have a limited edition palette that I carry from NARS right now, but I think when that does expire, I think I'm just going to carry like the single versions of them. Then for the liquid blushes, I carry the Rare Beauty liquid blushes. Fantastic blushes, by the way, highly recommend. And then for the uh, cream bronzers, I do carry the Patrick Ta cream bronzers and also the Tande Chanel ones. Okay, next one is how to prevent foundation separation on the nose. So the most common reason for for this is because of the fact that somebody has dry skin on the nose and that's why. Um, I actually just had this happen to a bridal client not too long ago for a bridal preview I did and I ended up having to entirely remove the makeup on the nose and redo it. So how I did this was that I took a moisturizer on a q-tip and then I slightly exfoliated and made sure to moisturize and hydrate that area to get rid of any rough or dry patches and then I went back in with an eyeshadow primer. I have the MAC paint pots and those double really well as primers on the nose and it also prevents foundation from wiping off as easily. So I went in with that, um, something with a matte base to it. And then I went on top of there with foundation and then reset it with powder again. And that is probably my best trick for that. How do you reach out to photographers to get images of the wedding day? Usually I just DM them on Instagram <laughs> and I'll just say, hey, my name is Julie. I'm the makeup artist of so-and-so. Would you be able to share the wedding album? I would love to advertise it on my page. And I'll of course give you credit as well. And that's pretty much it. Like that's all you have to say to them. You can also email them too. But when you email them, it's more likely to end up in a junk folder. So I usually personally personally just DM them. People are pretty casual about it nowadays and most photographers don't have an issue with it as long as you ask permission, but you do need to ask permission from the photographers before you post things because some things can be copyrighted. Next question is, how do you get most of your clients word of mouth advertising IG? Uh, all of the above. <laughs> Um, I would say advertising probably the least to be totally honest. Like you would think that advertising would get me the most clients, but it really doesn't. Uh, I would say that word of mouth is the majority of it. Um, and then IG is probably up there too. I feel like a lot of people just type in whatever location that you're at. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend highly posting on your IG and kind of making sure that you keep up with your content because a lot of people will go through Instagram to be able to find you. Um, and then of course word of mouth too, but I would say mainly social media, especially if you don't have that many clients to begin with. Okay, then another person about building clientele. Like I get about six different clientele questions every single time. All right, next one is very similar to the last one. <laughs> I did my first wedding in February. Any tips on advertising, getting my name out there? Well, congratulations. I hope that your wedding went really well. Um, it's such a fun industry to be in. Yeah, as far as advertising, again, social media is going to be your absolute best friend. I cannot stress on how important getting your name out there on social media is and also getting connections with other wedding vendors too. Okay, a good corrector. Um, I have personally not found my go-to correctors yet. I'm thinking about personally going back to the LA Girl Pro color correctors. I don't use them that often. I bought these really nice Graftobian ones and I never use them. So I'm thinking about going to the LA Girl ones. I think they perform just as well as high-end products. All right, setting sprays and setting powder. Uh, setting spray by far is the Scandinavia Bridal Makeup Setting Spray. They are the same ones that make Urban Decay setting sprays. With setting powders, I usually use loose powders. I don't have any pressed powders in my whole entire kit except for the Ket Cosmetics ones, but those are found foundation powders. For loose powders though, I use the Huda Beauty ones and then I also use the One Size Beauty as well. Okay, this is the two-part question. Firstly, I hope everything's okay. It is now, but it wasn't a couple weeks ago. Um, also, how do you give the lip color in the touch-up kits if it's a liquid lipstick that will dry out when depotted? Thanks. It is not possible to depot liquid lipsticks and not have them dry out. As soon as they're exposed to air, then they will automatically dry out. So you will probably have to find an alternative for this. All right. How do you decide which products you want to include in your kit? Is it trial and error? 
Yes, 100%. You can do it based on people's recommendations, but overall though, that's kind of like asking somebody what their favorite foundation is. They're gonna have a different foundation than the next person and the next person after that and the next person after that. Like you will never get a straight answer from anybody. It's going to be how you work as an artist and what your overall makeup style is. Some people prefer more glam styles, which is going to be more full coverage. Some people prefer sheer foundations, which is more natural. It all depends and you're going to 100% waste a ton of money doing so, but guess what? You can write it off for tax. So yeah, you will definitely just have to experiment and play around though. People are asking really good questions on this one. I'm impressed. How many free sessions did you do when starting out? I feel like I've done so many, but I'm not getting any clients. Yeah, it takes a really long time. I think that people think when they automatically start posting on Instagram or on social media or something, you're going to get clients like overnight as soon as you start posting. And that's totally not the case. I had to build up my Instagram for probably a solid two years before I started getting a steady clientele to actually make a business out of. It's going to take longer than you think and everybody is the exact same way. Like I promise you, we have all been at that point. Um, my best advice though for this would be just keep going. Try to get really diverse looks and really diverse clientele in your chair. Eventually you'll get to a point where you you kind of develop your own makeup style and then people will want to hire you for that specific makeup style. I did probably over 50 model calls when I first began and I also did work previously for MAC Cosmetics for about three years-ish but if you are a complete beginner and starting out it's probably going to take you a little bit longer. Also I would highly recommend that you not just solely rely on social media to gain some sort of presence or get your name out there. Social media is not just necessarily for your specific area like anybody in the whole entire world can access social media and, but you want to target your your specific area. So make sure you're using hashtags like hashtag your location all the time on them. Um, and also make sure that you are reaching out to like other people for connections. So I've connected with like hairstylists, photographers. I specifically work in weddings. Um, but if you do have like film and television, you might want to reach out to like production companies or something, whatever niche that you want to get into. But you do need to gain connections because referrals are going to be probably about 90% of your clientele. All right, next one is I want to stick to one foundation for my makeup kit. What do you recommend help? Okay, first of all, you're going to have to get more than one foundation inside of your kit because the one foundation is not going to be able to account for all the different finishes and all the different coverages that you're probably going to need. So I would highly recommend at least carrying maybe two of them. Um, but as far as actual recommendations for it, as I mentioned before in the previous Q&A questions, you're going to just have to play around with things. It's not going to be something that people are going to be able to tell you. We're going to come to like an overall consensus, I think, like a bunch of makeup artists like the same foundations, but you might hate them. So you're going to have to waste money, you're going to have to invest your time into like experimenting with things and trying them out on other people. But I would recommend at least carrying a few foundations just to get as versatile as possible with your makeup kit. Guys, I'm like 40 minutes in, I'm almost done. Next question is, what are your go-to products for combination skin? With combination skin, it is actually not about the products that you use at all. It's about the techniques that you employ. So you can use any products that you want, whether it's for dry skin or oily skin, but you just have to make sure you're prepping that area that is dry or oily or whatever accurately. And that is pretty much what you wanna focus on. It's not necessarily about the products that you use. Okay, <laughs> I need to eat some breakfast. I think I'm probably gonna have some avocado avocado toast. I just bought some bagel seasoning for it, so I'm really freaking excited about it. But let me get out some avocados. I also got this little bar, uh, chocolate and peanut butter bar, inside of one of my HelloFresh boxes. So I ate that and it was really good. It gave me some protein for the day. There's so much content that I wanna film for you guys and I've gotten so backed up just because I've nonstop been filming vlogs. <laughs> so let me know if you guys are getting tired of the vlogs or if you guys are enjoying them because I don't have time to film any other content. I think that is pretty much it unless I think of anything else for today. But besides that though, I think I'm just gonna talk to you guys tomorrow when I'm doing the two bridal previews. Hey, feature Julie here. I just wanted to pause here really quickly because I totally forgot to shout out these two people. I have two different people, Tina and Lauren, that decided to contribute to my super thanks on my channel and I'm so, so appreciative of it. So thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate all the love and support that you guys show me every single day on this channel, whether it be through comments or through the super thanks or the super chat. I really, really appreciate it. Um, if you guys don't know what super chat and super thanks are, they are the little heart icons with the dollar symbols inside of it. So if you guys really have been enjoying my content and really appreciate it and wanna show your appreciation in a different way, then that is an option. Super chat is only available 
available during the premieres of my videos. But then the super thanks is available all the time. It's right below the video where the subscribe button is, I believe. Again, I wouldn't be able to do what I do without you guys. So as sappy as that sounds, <laughs> I really love and appreciate all of you guys. So thank you so much. Good morning, guys. <laughs> I'm currently getting myself some coffee. I actually feel pretty okay right now. I just um, needed a little bit extra boost today because I know I'm going to be doing two bridal previews, which usually takes a lot of energy out of me. Hang on, let me light the candle on the entryway because this one takes so long to actually start melting for some reason, which is like really annoying. Anyways, I was watching Makeup by Nina's vlogs. She is Nina L on YouTube. And she took like four bridal previews in one day. And I was like, girl, that is going for like so many hours. Cause I usually like to dedicate about two hours per bridal preview. It usually takes me like an hour and a half. Bridal previews take a lot more energy because you're not only getting to know the bride, but you're doing a longer application because you're stopping and starting and really taking time to consult with them. So with that in mind, it just takes a lot more energy and being the introverted person that I am, I cannot handle more than two people. They just take up so much of my mental energy, but I truly do love getting to beat my brides though. I'm not complaining. <laughs> okay, I just had to light my other candle in my room just so that would start burning. That one's a woodwick and I absolutely love woodwick candles. They radiate scent very, very quickly and um, I like that a lot better. The other one I got from TJ Maxx <laughs> because it just fit the aesthetic of the front room. Um, so I got it, but it just doesn't radiate scent as well. So I love to personally light a couple of candles just for a really good like ambiance, like homey kind of feel. So I am just getting myself ready. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, I am done with my makeup. It turned out really good. I think the foundation maybe is a little bit dark, um, but I think overall though, it's fine. I have about an hour until my client gets here. Side note, I'm really glad that it's like so freaking sunny outside. I thought it was going to be overcast and rainy again, and I absolutely hate doing makeup when it's overcast because then I have to bust out the artificial lights and it's just not ideal. So I'm glad that we do have some sunshine here. Hopefully it holds up on me for the next four hours or so. Right now I'm working on cleaning my house. Um, I have talked about this before, but if you are doing makeup out of an in-home studio like I am, you still want it to feel homey, but you also want to maintain a professional environment. So make sure that you don't have like clutter going all over your house. Make sure you clean before your clients come, just like you normally would if like a guest was coming to your house or something that you don't know. You wanna make a good first impression. Just really quick story time. There was a bride that I had that came with her maid of honor last year to do a bridal preview with me. She and that maid of honor were extremely happy with my setup and everything. And then they ended up going to the hair trial and I didn't hear about this until like the day of the wedding. They said that when they walked in there, they got such a bad impression because the house when they walked in was just like a giant living room. There was no like dedicated room for this person to set up or anything. They had hair tools that were extremely dirty. Apparently they had like kids and animals like running around and everything. That's a very unprofessional environment. Like I understand it's your house, but you do need to maintain some sort of professionalism. So, I mean, if you have kids, for instance, you might want to plan it at a time that you can get a babysitter for your child. Otherwise, if you have the financial means, then you can go ahead and run a studio for a couple hours. But with me, I just have my dogs, but I do make sure that they are put away in their kennels. I don't have them just running all around my house. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean right now because I am wasting time now. <laughs> So I'll talk to you guys once I'm setting up for the bridal preview. Okay, I spoke too soon. Um, it's really crappy outside now. Damn it! Okay, still gotta get set up here.
just a little overview. This is what the station looks like. Got the kit set up and then, oh, I still need to put in the dog poo bags for the trash can. I convert one side into a trash can, but this part is for the dirty brushes or the brushes that I'm currently working on. Then I also have the three most common palettes that I work out of. So this is all blushes and bronzers. Then I have my matte shadows and also my shimmer shadows. I have my tools on my workstation and everything is laid out on this silicone mat that I have from Amazon. Everything that I have that's kind of like kit related is linked in my Amazon storefront in the description of each one of my videos in case you guys are wondering. So go check that out. This is a mirror that came out of the original kit that I had. It wasn't this one. So I don't know if you can buy it separately. Um, and then this is the My Kit Co Brush Buddy and also the Brush Buddy Base. They are two separate compartments. And this is the camping chair that's made out of aluminum. I try not to transport this every single time if I don't have to. I mainly just use it in my studio, but if I do have to do a numerous amount of clients, then I will go ahead and bring this with me, especially if I know that the venue or the location where I'm going doesn't have a chair. But yeah, it sits up high enough though that I can easily access my clients at eye level and I don't have to bend over, which is really nice. This one specifically got discontinued off of King Camp's Amazon page, um, but I do have a similar one that is made by the same brand. Linked on my Amazon storefront, it just looks a little bit different. Every single time we get really nice weather, like it's supposed to be 61 degrees today, it always rains and I'm over it. I just want a really nice day and sunny. That's all I'm asking for. Yay, bridal preview complete. I'll put a video clip of what I did on her. I was so happy with the way the makeup turned out, guys. She was super great. I absolutely loved getting to meet her and getting to chat with her. I'm really trying to create like a personal relationship with my clients as opposed to just getting the makeup done and leaving. I feel like that's how you get your referrals. I'm gonna go ahead and get myself cleaned up because I have all of this. I have to fill out a consultation sheet. Um, and just as a reminder, if you go on to shop, you ruby.com. I do have three different templates that are available that you can customize. And um, I have the consultation templates, which are basically categorized in different sections for different parts of the face. Put all the products that you use on somebody and write them down. Take any notes that you want from the bridal previews. I do sell bridal contract templates, which is like the most popular. It's really hard to try to figure out how to word a bridal contract and make sure that you have all the clauses and all the information in there that you need. So I took the liberty of drafting a template for it. So you guys can just basically plug and play information into the template, customize it however you'd like, but basically all the wording is there for you. And I made everything pretty affordable. And then I also have an accounting template, which is really important to keep track of all your financials, like your expenses, your income, etc. And then you can just give it to your accountant at the end of the year and then it's all set. I do sell those three different templates on shopjulieruby.com if you guys are interested in purchasing those. And self plug. Okay, I gotta get myself cleaned up. I have about a half hour before my client comes. My dogs unfortunately have to be kept in their kennels the whole time, which they're probably not loving. Just in case you guys are wondering, this is what the consultation sheet looks like. You put your client name up here. Then you have all the categories right there too. I do have a note section on here and I like to use the note section to actually put down what we talk about as far as like the person's personal life. Like I learned her fiance's name and then I also learned what occupation she has. So I kind of jot that down too. And this seems kind of stalkerish, but on the wedding day, then I can remember what we actually talked about. Usually a day after the bridal previews happen, I'll email them and just like touch base with them to see how everything were throughout the day. And if they want to make any changes. Then for the lips, this is going to seem super weird. I usually like to take a little bit of the lipstick color that I used on them and then I'll dab it right on the side of the paper. So I know what lipstick color that I'm trying to replicate on the day of because sometimes your proportions aren't always the same whenever you're mixing colors. So yeah, that's pretty much how I fill out the consultation forms. I just try to be as detailed as possible and then I'll usually staple it to the back of the contract so I have everything together. And then now I'm going to clean up and reset for my next client. I'm not going to do it on camera because I have like 10 minutes to do so. Okay, second bridal preview complete. This bride was a little bit more reserved and sometimes it makes me nervous because I'm like, okay, will you actually tell me if you don't like something? But I think she genuinely did like it. She was so excited at the very end and I'm so happy with that. So I'm just printing out another consultation sheet. Do those right away. Otherwise I'm gonna forget. What's really funny is this bride actually had the same story as how my husband and I met each other. So we had that in common. And then also my husband's name is Dustin with a D and then her fiance's name is Justin with a J. How weird is that? I let my dogs out because now they've been holed up in their kennels for like five hours. I feel so bad, but hey, it's fine. They'll live. Also, this is a new room that you guys haven't seen before. <laughs> This is my husband's man cave that he likes to call it. We don't actually have a spare bedroom in our house. It's just like his gaming room and then my bedroom and then our master bedroom. But someday I would freaking love to have an extra spare bedroom. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and just fill out the consultation sheet here. I do have a makeup appointment that is coming tomorrow. She's getting her makeup done for a podcast that she is hosting a live show of tomorrow. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and eat something because I'm getting a little bit of a migraine going on because I haven't eaten anything this morning. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow morning.
Good morning, guys. I am up bright and early, not for any particular reason. It's about 7.45 right now. So I usually like to meditate in the morning and I've been kind of getting back into it a little bit. And I recently found an app that kind of lets you meditate and do like daily affirmations and the whole entire thing and kind of gives you in like a more positive headspace. Also, this app is like not sponsored or anything. They do not know I exist. Um, I just randomly found it. Now you guys get to see what apps are on my phone. It's right here. It's called my morning. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it here. And this is what it has. So it just has um, morning complex if you wanted to start the whole entire thing. Otherwise, you can choose different categories. So if you want to meditate, there's affirmations, there's fitness, there's a diary. So you can write down like your thoughts and everything. Um, visualization. And then also you can read. So it just starts off your day at a positive note. So choose a meditation. Um, so I'm just going to say guided meditation. So it looks like it goes for a little bit over 10 minutes. I do better when I have all the lights off. Just sitting in front of a window is just very calming. I can soak in the natural light. Seriously, meditation does greatly help. Some people don't believe in it, but I personally really like it a lot. It's heavily helped me out with my headspace. And also the other thing that's helped me too is not being on my phone for like the entirety of me doing this. Like I won't go on the internet. I won't check any text messages. I'll just check what time it is. I'm gonna say start affirmation. So you just have to repeat all the affirmations here. You can also choose your affirmation too, it looks like. So if you say choose, you can go through all of these different categories. Okay, so it looks like for the rest of these, the fitness diet, visualization and reading. You do have to pay the $34.99 a year for it. I think my husband's up now, so let me go ahead and get some breakfast. Okay, it's been a couple hours since I talked to you guys last. I've just been finishing editing a vlog. If you guys haven't checked out that video, it was a very drama-filled weekend, so check out the last vlog if you guys have not already. Um, my husband was nice enough to go to Panera for me, so I got a cold brew coffee because I needed a little pep in my step. Also, I do want to give an update really quickly. Um, I hauled a Burt's Bees little lip scrub to replace the uh, sugar scrub from Bite Beauty that I used to have and guys it is so terrible. Do not buy it. <laughs> the thing that bothers me about it is that it doesn't exfoliate anything and then the worst part about it is that it has like almost a waxy kind of texture so I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna actually have to spend the money on getting the fresh sugar lip scrub because that's the one I've heard the greatest things about. I really like their lip balm. So I'm going to get myself ready and get my makeup on and then I'm going to head out to Sephora because I need to grab that fresh sugar lip scrub and then this is for myself. Um, I've been using this sugar lip balm for a little bit. It's the caramel one. It smells so delicious. As you guys can tell, like I'm at the edges. <laughs> Of this lip balm. I'm debating if I want to buy two of these and then use this for my actual clients. Okay, sorry the blinker is really annoying, but I am heading out to Sephora right now. Man, it is a super, super crappy day. I think there is like little snow flurries that are happening here. I'm not really exactly sure what's going on. It's actually like an hour and a half later than when I spoke to you guys last because I got stuck on watching a podcast. I watch podcasts because overall I am a YouTuber at heart. Like I love watching YouTube videos and visually seeing things. I'm not a very good auditory kind of learner. I never have been. So I've recently been in love with um, Laura Lee and Manny MUA's podcast full coverage and I've been watching it on YouTube because I love their personalities. I've been following them because they're like the OG content creators in the beauty space and they had Bailey Sarian who's the murder makeup mystery Monday girl as a guest on their podcast. So they were talking about like dating life and how it's really hard to actually be a well-known influencer and try to be in the dating world because a lot of people know who you are and I just I guess never realized how difficult that would actually be. They were also talking about how people, especially on TikTok, have become heavily scrutinized for the things that they do. I do think that people obviously need to take responsibility for their mistakes, especially if they put them out there on social media. But at the same time, people do make mistakes because they are human beings. The only difference is that those mistakes are publicized as opposed to trying to keep them private. The fact that any sort of social media influencers are normal people one day and then they're all of a sudden just thrown into stardom. You know what I mean? It's not like actresses or actors or something who purposely know that they want to go into that role. Whereas you don't know 
if or when you're just going to blow up overnight and gain those millions of followers. So I've always thought about this, like if I randomly woke up one day and I had a viral video take off and I just got shot into YouTube fame, I would freak out. Like I actually do not have any intentions of going viral and it's going to seem very weird. My main goal of YouTube is to help other people that want to become makeup artists and provide a source of entertainment for people. If I could just honestly make enough money off of YouTube to live off of alongside of makeup artistry, I would be happy with that. Like I could stop there. I don't have to make millions of dollars. Like that's not my overall goal with this. It's not about the money for me. I just want to make enough to support myself so I don't have to keep juggling jobs back and forth. Okay, I am at Sephora now. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in and then I will talk to you guys after that. Okay guys, I'm back home now. Um, the only things I really picked up are the Caramel Hydrating Lip Balm. Unfortunately, there was only one of them. I think I'm gonna be selfish for the time being and use it for myself, but I did get the Fresh Sugar Lip Scrub too. Fortunately, this was the only one left, guys. I got the last one of this one and also the last one of the lip balms too, so they must be pretty popular. Although I think the Sephora VIB sale is coming up in April, so I can also stock up on stuff then. Then um, I also wanted to get the One Size Setting Powder, the Deep Dark version. If if you guys don't know, I have the Juvia's Place Gobi powder, um, which is somewhat dark, but it's not like the darkest that it can possibly be. If you guys didn't see my last deeper skin makeup tutorial, I had such an issue when I tried to bake with the actual powder. It stuck to where I put it and it would not blend out, which overall made my makeup application not turn out how I wanted it to. Because of the fact that it's not very user-friendly with how I usually do makeup, I wanted to remove it out of my kit. I think it's also getting close to its shelf life too, so I think I'm just gonna like completely throw it away and then replace it with the translucent powder that I got from one size. I'm pretty much just going to be hanging out here for probably the next hour or so. I have a client that's coming in because I'm doing makeup for a podcast that she's doing live today. I have actually done her makeup before for a photographer that I work with named Brittany. She came to her studio and then I did this client's makeup there, but she hasn't ever hired me out individually for things. So I'm glad that she liked her makeup well enough last time that she wanted to hire me again. I think I'm just gonna be trying to finish up the vlog that I'm editing and then put the things that I bought inside of my kit. Show you guys this really quickly because I got kind of creative with this. I actually decided to transport the Peach and Lily All Day Lazy Pads. I really love these to prep people's skin with and it kind of lightly exfoliates while still hydrating. It's really good for sensitive skin. And I wanted to get a smaller jar to put this into because this is like what they come in. It's this large tub. If you can see, I pretty much squished the pads into this little jar here. I know it doesn't exactly fit them nice, but I was able to get enough in here that I can just pull them out as needed. It's about 115. I have 45 minutes until my client gets here. The makeup application went amazing and uh, I am so grateful for my clients that repeatedly hire me for things. It just makes me feel like I thoroughly have done my job really well whenever I get people that continuously like come back to me for makeup. What was really great though is actually um, I took the opportunity to ask her what her podcast was going to be about that she's doing her live show for. So she goes, actually that would be great because I kind of wanted to rehearse it anyways. So in a way I kind of let her rehearse for about 45 minutes. <laughs> And um, yeah, she got done on time and I am super happy with it. So anyways, that's pretty much about it for this video. If you guys did enjoy the video, definitely go ahead and give me a big thumbs up as well as also subscribing down to my channel. I do upload a ton of makeup artist related content with other things sprinkled in there. So if you guys are interested in that sort of thing, then definitely go ahead and subscribe to the channel. As always, I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right.
Bye.